Well, you know, before I answer the question, I would like to make uh, a very important uh, distinction uh, between speculation and uh, market manipulation. Uh, market manipulation is, is an activity which is designed to move the prices away from the levels that uh, would have been reached uh, through unobstructed uh, uh, interaction of demand and supply. Uh, manipulation is illegal in practically every jurisdiction I am aware of. And uh, it's, it's, it's an activity which, social, which typically produces uh, negative social outcomes. Speculation, on the other hand, is a perfectly legal activity. It's effectively an investment strategy which is designed uh, to uh, take advantage of anticipated changes in the future uh, price levels. Uh, speculation is not only legal, but it's also a necessary component of practically every physical and financial market. Uh, speculators perform a very important social function. They provide liquidity to the market participants. They uh, uh, help to reduce the transaction costs. They help to reduce bid offer spreads. And also in some markets, uh, they are a, a, a critical part which makes those markets possible. And this is especially true of the, uh, the forward commodity markets which are often characterized by a structural imbalance between natural longs and natural shorts. In such markets, uh, the, the volume of forward contracts offered for sale may be different than the volume of forward contracts demanded by those who want to go long or to buy. And if this is the case, the speculators have to step in and fill the void. Well, why, why the specula speculators are unpopular? You know, the, you know it's, it's a complicated question. And again, uh, I would like to uh, make a comment first. You know, it's possible for speculation to reach excessive levels, uh, levels which are uh, suboptimal from the point of view of uh, uh, social policy and uh, uh, social well-being. You know, this may, this may happen from time to time, and in my long career in the financial and energy markets, I have seen some cases of excessive speculation. But uh, one has to uh, realize that it's uh, uh, not recommended to uh, look at speculation in isolation, in the vacuum, uh, without paying attention to the macro macroeconomic policy issues. My view is that excessive speculation is typically related to other macroeconomic conditions. In recent years, it's related to artificially low levels of interest rates in many advanced economies. And uh, uh, it's not rational to uh, criticize humans f for being rational and responding to uh, the price uh, signals. So why uh, uh, speculation is uh, uh, criticized in the media, uh, by the politician and by the politicians. Well, you know, the, the, the critical issue is that in the recent years we have seen uh, 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 very rapid changes in the price levels of many critical energy commodities. And when this happens, especially when the prices of oil spike, it, it's, it's natural that uh, there is a call for an explanation. And uh, speculators are the typically a very easy target, and uh, uh, banning speculation or reducing the scope of speculation is typically a very easy answer to some very serious problems. My view is uh, that the speculators uh, uh, cannot affect the overall level of prices in the long run. Uh, it's after all, all the planes uh, have to come back to earth at some point. I, I, I think that uh, in the case of ex excessive speculation, we may uh, be, be see uh, increased uh, volatility. We may see increased ampl amplitude of price fluctuations but it's uh, practically impossible to move the prices away from the equilibrium level 
uh, determined by the marginal cost of production for a very long time. You know, it, it may happen for a limited period of time, but sooner or later the market fundamentals will uh, re-establish themselves. I think that since 2008, uh, we can detect the symptoms of a new market dynamics. So first of all, the overall level of prices has moved up and the prices tend to fluctuate uh, between a certain, uh, within a certain band. Uh, the lower band, I think, is determined by the uh, macroeconomic uh, policy of certain oil exporters who have to cover uh, the expenses, the budget expenses related to certain social policy programs. Uh, the, upper, the upper bound is again determined by the policy of uh, major oil exporters who worry in the, that in the long run excessive oil prices will induce uh, uh, certain countermeasures. Conservation measures uh, will uh, uh, create incentives to develop new technologies which will reduce uh, the overall level of uh, demand for oil. And for this reason, if, and for this reason the, the, the producers or the major exporting countries will be interested to maintain in maintaining the, the prices within a certain band. It's also very important to recognize that many oil exporters have a stake in the stability and prosperity of the highly developed economies. After all, many uh, sovereign wealth funds uh, uh, representing the governments of uh, oil exporting countries have huge stakes, huge, huge investments in the stock and bond markets of the uh, OECD countries and in the real estate in Paris, New York, Geneva and other and other places and the stability and the stability of the highly developed economies is in their best interest and you know this is something that we, we should uh, we should uh, keep in mind you know another comment I would like to make is that whenever you have the situation of prices uh, capped uh, 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 with a with an upper bound at, at this, uh, and uh, uh, having a floor. A, a, a lower bound, you know, the prices will typically fluctuate within within the band, you know, and this is a perfect situation for somebody who is in, an intermediary uh, between producers and uh, and uh, users of uh, oil and other energy commodities. So it's uh, it's a perfect you know it's a perfect situation for some financial players. Well, we can always uh, learn from history. But having said this, you know, I, I, I have to uh, uh, say that I believe that uh, uh, we are operating now in a qualitatively different uh, energy market in general and oil and, uh, and qualitatively different uh, oil market specifically. Uh, when I, I when I started my career in the merchant energy business back in 1992, I was working for a company which was trading a number of energy commodities, but each trading desk was an island. The, the natural gas traders didn't have to interact with the coal traders, or they didn't have to interact with uh, oil traders. Today, we operate in a highly integrated global system with shocks being trans propagated, propagated very quickly from one part of the energy complex uh, to, to, to another. And this means that uh, the number of decision variables uh, a typical oil trader or a typical energy trader has to consider in making his decisions has expanded over the last 10-15 years uh, to, 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 to a great degree. I have a friend who is uh, trading oil uh, for a a uh, uh, big uh, uh, company located in Houston. Uh, he uh, doesn't have free weekends any longer. Uh, he wakes up at night to check on the developments in the European markets. Uh, when he comes to work early in the morning, 
the first thing he reads is the report on the developments in the Far East sent uh, uh, to him uh, from, from the Singapore office. And so and, uh, and, uh, he has no uh, luxury any longer to take long lunches. He has to stay glued to, to, to his screen and he has to follow not only the narrowly defined commodity markets, he has to look at the political developments, he has to look at, uh, at the political developments in Nigeria, uh, the Persian Gulf, he has to look at the interest, uh, interest rate markets. So he has to watch practically, practically everything. You know, another important change is that, the, uh, is that trading has accelerated to a, to a great degree. It's, it's possible today to obtain very quick access to information, uh, practically in, in real time, and also it's, uh, it's, uh, it's possible to enter into trading positions and exit positions around the clock. You know, trading continues overnight in, in many uh, very important uh, markets, and one can uh, uh, change positions with one click of a, with one click of a mouse. So. Uh, uh, the, the life of a trader has become much more interesting, but it has also become uh, much more difficult.